Dan Oman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the Grade 1 Arlington Million at Churchill Downs on Saturday. It's race number 11. It's at a mile and an eighth. It's on the turf. Let's take a look at this field. It's nice that Churchill has salvaged a historically important race like the Arlington Million. It's nice to see back to the million-dollar purse. I believe last year's uh, Mr. D was not a million dollars. We're going a mile and an eighth, though, instead of the usual mile and a quarter of the million. Yeah, I'm not sure that uh, Churchill can accommodate a mile and a quarter on the turf. Uh, I'm not sure about that, but I don't think they can. Mile and an eighth is fine. Uh, they got a, a field of nine. It feels like a pretty well-matched field at that. Very well-matched field from Southern California is the ultra-consistent number four, Smooth Like Straight. That's your morning line favorite at five to two. And as we throw up the time form U.S. pace projector, we know Smooth Like Straight likes to be on or near the lead. That's where Timeform US has him, along with one of Michael Maker's trained horses, the five mega city. It's a really interesting dynamic, this race, because you've got quality horses like Smooth Like Straight who would benefit if the pace isn't fast. You've got a big closer like Set Piece who would benefit if the pace is very fast. It'll be interesting to see uh, who gets the better of it from a race flow standpoint. Yeah, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. And listen, there are plenty of horses who fit right in the middle of that dynamic as well, who just want to sit you know, sort of somewhere in mid-pack and hope they just get a clean trip uh, into this race. I don't, maybe the pace will be fast. And I don't know when I went through the race without looking at the pace projector, I don't know if I felt like it was going to be fast, but certainly smooth like straight and Mega City are probably going forward in here. And set piece is likely to be relaxing near the back of the pack, hoping to make one run. This horse loves Churchill Downs. He is four for five under the Twin Spires. He beat a, a vastly inferior field in the dinner party. Two starts back at Pimlico, and he just had a very bad trip last time out in the Forbidden Apple. Florin Giroux did everything he could. This horse just doesn't have a lot of speed. He broke from the rail. He tried to save as much ground as possible, but it's tough to pick your way through 10 other horses. Yeah, I mean, you know, once you commit to staying in, and, and Giroud did commit to staying in around the final turn of that race because um, it felt like they could have got the source going maybe a little bit sooner than they did, um, but they would have had to go outside to do that. He decided to stay towards the inside, and he got himself into some traffic through the stretch there. He ran fine. His race two back was also fine against, as you've uh, already mentioned, a very weak field. Um, and off the layoff in the maker's mark, I mean, he just – Things just didn't go his way that day. He was way too fresh, pulling way too hard, um, and sort of left his uh, his closing kick into the early stages of that race. This horse is good, and if this race sets up for him, um, I'll expect him to come running at the end. Do you feel that kick is more effective at a flat mile? He's done his best running at a mile, mile and a 16th. Now he's got to do it going a mile and an eighth. Yeah, he might be one of those horses who, you know, the shorter you can go with him, the better. Um, I still think with him, as far as he's concerned, it's just all about what kind of setup he gets. I, I don't think it's going to make a big difference to him if it's a mile and eight, as long as there's something for him to run at. Down from his Saratoga base, Chad Brown sends the two sacred life coming off a victory in the grade three Monmouth at this distance at Monmouth Park. Let's watch sacred life take down this field. It was an okay field. No great shakes. The third place finisher, Epic Bromance, would return at a giant price to run second in the grade one UN with a 101 buyer speed figure. It seemed like forever since sacred life had reached the winner's circle. In fact, it was just about two years. He loves Monmouth Park, however. He does. Um, he, he, Manny Franco did a smart thing in this race today. He didn't let him get too far away from that pace because oftentimes with Sacred Life, when you watch his races, you just sort of realize when they come to this stretch that he's just got way too much to do. Um, and he often doesn't overcome it. Listen, can he win this race? I guess he can. I don't think he's the, the best finisher in the field. And I, I've just never really liked him that much. He's OK. And, and if he works out the kind of the kind of trip that he needs, he can be there at the end. I'd just rather bet somebody else. The three field passes, a versatile, tactical horse that can work out his own trip. He got placed first via disqualification in his last race down at Lone Star. He's earned a million dollars kind of the hard way. He's had to run 27 times to do it, but you usually know what you're going to get with from field pass. And it's a nice, honest effort, and he's going to be a price in this race. Yeah, very well managed by Maker right from the start. He's found nothing but good spots for this horse. On the rare occasions when they do step him up into some tougher races, he runs fine. He always acquits himself really well. And I think his running style has a lot to do with that, Dan. He's just super tactical. He can get any kind of a trip in the race. You can put him on the lead if you have to. Um, but if the pace is too fast, he's comfortable sitting behind horses. Um, and he shows up every single time. I mean, you can do way worse than this horse at a price. Smooth Like Straight has earned triple-digit buyer speed figures in his last eight races. 
This is a tough game because he's only won one of those races. Let's watch his most recent start, the grade one maker mile. He was odds on in this race and he prompted a 40 to one shot on the backstretch. He was kind of forced to go all in a little bit early when that horse backed out. He had a clear lead, but this is no slouch running him over in the stretch. Count again is one of the better turf milers in the country. Yeah, that's a good horse that ran him down. And, and this trip didn't quite work out for smooth like straight. He still ran fine. Um, I didn't like his race off the layoff at Keeneland uh, quite as much. I know he got a similar figure for that race, but that pace wasn't that fast. He was in control of it. And when they came for him, it really never looked like he was going to win. He only wound up getting beat a neck, but it never looked like he was going to win. Listen, I don't want to knock this horse. He's really good. Um, and he, I, I think mile and eighth is fine for this horse too, but I do kind of feel like there's a little bit of a character flaw with him, Dan. I, I don't really want to bet this horse at a short price. And especially with Mega City right next door, who might put a little bit of heat on him and make that mile and an eighth feel a bit more strenuous. Mega City, a typical maker specially, claimed this horse for 80 at Churchill Downs out of a winning effort. He ran him in the Texas Turf Classic last time out against Field Pass. He showed good speed in this race. He's going to finish first. He will get disqualified, taken down and placed second. But this horse is in razor sharp form right now. Now we got to find out how good he is. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, listen, he ran well in here, I guess. You know, if you look at uh, the time form USPPs, they have the internal fraction. This race color-coded red, um, like it was a fast pace. I didn't think it was a fast pace. I thought this horse had all the best of it uh, up the backstretch without a challenger. He managed to fight off the first one. He was coming out at the end there while he tried to hold off uh, field pass, and he got DQ'd. He ran fine in that race. I don't necessarily feel like he, he improved all that much for Maker, Dan, and I think he has to improve to beat this field. Santine is a grade one stakes winner over course and distance on Derby Day. He won the Turf Classic and he was very game in doing so because it looked like Mira Mission had all the momentum on him. And Santine just said, no, you don't, and came right back and won that race. Last time out in the Manhattan, he had a little shoe problem in the paddock. And then he was just placed on a hard chase going after Tribuvan, who was loose. He went after him on the turn. He understandably tired. That race has been very, very live, producing three next out winners. I like him cutting back, and I think he sits third off the speeds. Yeah, I like him cutting back, too, and I think he can get a good trip in this race. The mile and a quarter, I mean, I have no problem with them trying it in a major race like the Manhattan. I just don't really feel like this horse wants to go that far. Um, so I think cutting back to nine furlongs is a good thing for him. And he just, he's got a lot of upside still. I mean, I can't say that I've loved this horse, but he does keep getting better with every start. And I feel like that trend has continued in his last two races. I think he's a major player in here. I'm a huge fan of the seven admission office. I was pleasantly surprised to see him back in the entries off over a year and a half layoff. And he didn't disappoint beating field pass in the grade three Arlington right off the bench. And last time out, they ran him a mile and a half, which I just don't think is his best uh, distance. The pace wasn't very fast in that race. Soldier Rising is a decent horse who came back to win a third level allowance with a 97 buyer. He's got a closing kick in here. And if he gets the right kind of trip, he could spice things up. Yeah, I agree with that. He He's not a horse that – he's another horse that – he doesn't win that often, uh, but, he man, he shows up every single time. He basically had no chance last time at a mile and a half. They just took him back to last. The pace was way too slow, and he was really trying to get into that race uh, through the stretch. And that field just wasn't coming back to him. I, I thought he ran really well. I don't mind them cutting him back to nine furlongs here. Uh, at, at the kind of price he's listed at on the morning line, I'm going to use this horse. The eight cavalry charge is a graded stakes winner this year at the mile and an eighth distance coming off a runner up effort at Indiana Grand. Let's watch that race. I thought the trip all in all worked out for him in this mile in the 16th race. He's in behind the leader. They were going a fast pace. He's going to get to the outside with aim and he's going to run on to finish a good second. Uh, he has the tactical speed again where David Cohen can place him wherever. Yeah, true enough. Um, I don't think he needs the lead to be at his best, but he does like to be forward in his races. Um, he ran fine in here. He got a good trip, as you mentioned. The pace was really fast. That's a good horse that wound up winning that race, Ivar. Um, had no problem with this horse, especially at the morning line price, but um, he was one of the ones I just, I sort of felt like he would need to run the best race of his life if he was going to beat all of these horses. Cellist is the number nine. He's two for two at Churchill Downs, including a win at a mile and an eighth. Now, he won the grade three Louisville two starts back despite a very wide trip. That race was going a mile and a half. They ran him back at Colonial. Were you surprised how aggressive they were with him in the early portion of this race? I know that's how he ran early in his career, but I think he got a lot better once they told him, once they taught him to sit and relax. 
Yeah, I agree with that. I, I was a little surprised that they they sent him uh, early in that uh, in that race last time. Um, listen, not that it's, I don't think it's a huge excuse for him, but, um, you know, certainly he was disappointing that day, but he has better races than that to get to. I don't, you know, the, I guess the real question is, Dan, did he just, you know, get better with more distance and is he going to be as good now, um, cutting back to nine furlongs? Cause he's another one. I think he's going to have to improve quite a bit if he's going to win this race. Let's take a look at our top picks for this year's Arlington Million. Of course, it's at Churchill Downs. Santin, I think, trips out. He's already a grade one stakes winner over course and distance. And I still think he's improving with each start. Me too. That's And that's why I took him. Um, I just feel like he makes a lot of sense in this race. We'll see what kind of price he is. Then. I don't think I would take too short a price on him. But with Smooth Like Straight in the race and some others who have the credentials uh, to take money in here, I, I think you might get a fair price on Santin kind of rooting for smooth like straight he's always a bridesmaid never a bride despite running some very fast races now he's gonna have to earn this one with mega city in this race but i'd like to see him go to the front and maybe stretch this field out six one four seven for mike four six one two for me it's the grade one arlington million at churchill good luck